Hello, my friends. Today we are talking about copyright infringement, also known as piracy. Now, since the very early days of guitar pedals, makers have borrowed or outright copied circuits from their competitors to make their pedals. Back in the 1960s, Ivo Arbiter took the Mark 1.5 tone bender to build the fuzz face, which he sold for cheaper with slightly inferior components. But the fuzz face went on to become a legend far outselling the tone bender thanks in no small part to Jimi Hendrix using it. If you've been around the pedal world very long, you probably know that many of the cheap effects pedals on the market from Chinese companies are close replicas of much more expensive effects from bigger name brand manufacturers. I own several of them myself and have covered some of them on this channel. The German-owned company Behringer is well known for, shall we say, borrowing circuit design, and the Chinese company Moore is one of the biggest names in that market right now. Moore is particularly shameless in marketing their pedals, and I'm not sure if any of them are actually original designs, but nonetheless, they have a fairly good reputation because their pedals sound much like the originals, and they have a fairly solid build quality. Moore's most popular pedal line is the Micro Series, and in addition to a much more affordable price tag, they also come in this tiny footprint. This here is the Mark I Tender Octaver and is the subject of today's video. Electroharmonics successfully won a lawsuit against Moore for this pedal and forced the discontinuation of its manufacturer. Now, personally, I'm torn on this issue. On the one hand, pedal designers are putting a lot of work and money into designing high quality pedals only to have some other company come in, steal the circuit, and profit off it, undercutting them in the process. On the other hand, many musicians can't afford to buy hand built boutique pedals and cheaper manufacturers are getting good tones into the hands of musicians for a much more reasonable price. There are also some like the Behringer Super Fuzz and Heavy Metal that are based off boss pedals that are no longer in production, and I see no reason why it's better to buy an original second hand for a huge markup. When the Waza reissue of the HM2 comes out, I will happily buy it, I would love to own an original, and I'm happy to support Boss's decision to reissue that pedal. So today I have a little story for you about this Moore Tender Octaver. I bought this for $70 in 2016, around the time it came out. In 2019, Electroharmonics announced that they had won an over two-year lawsuit in the Chinese courts against Moore for copyright infringement. It's exceptionally difficult to win a suit over copyright infringement when it comes to circuit design, because any changes in the components can constitute a new signal even if it sounds effectively the same as the original. However, in the case of the Tender Octaver, it contains digital components with software on them as well as the analog circuitry. When Moore was copying the Electroharmonics Micropog, they likely dumped the whole ROM from the software and didn't notice the bit in the code that says copyright of Electroharmonics. Because Moore copied the software with the copyright notice in it, it gave Electroharmonics a rock solid case for copyright infringement even if Moore did change some of the analog circuitry. I'm not sure if they did, the pedals effectively sound the same, but there may be some small changes in the components. Nonetheless, Electroharmonics had a perfect case for copyright infringement. The lawsuit involved the Tender Octaver based off the Micropog and the Moorgan based off the C9 organ machine. Both pedals from Electroharmonics with their software copied over copyright notice and all. Since the lawsuit, Moore has released a new version of the Tender Octaver, the Mark II, this time with different software, and I hope it's proprietary. The Mark I, being discontinued, has gone up in value dramatically. As I said, I bought this for $70 in 2016. It is now going for as much as $160 on the used market today. We know at least that the software in the Tender Octaver is the same as the Micropog. The Micropog sells for around 215 US dollars. So even on the marked up used market, the Tender Octaver is still cheaper, though it's much harder to find than a new Micropog. In addition to that, it comes in a much smaller form factor. The Micropog comes in a medium sized enclosure like my base Big Muff here. And here is the Tender Octaver next to it. Quite a big size difference. Ever the comedian, Electroharmonics owner Mike Matthews released this photo after the lawsuit and said, Electroharmonics has successfully won battles with labor racketeers in the USA and ruthless mobsters in Russia. After almost two years of fighting, the Chinese courts have awarded Electroharmonics a nearly six-figure judgment. Our victory is now complete, 
and these pirates have walked the plank. I looked for more information on this case or any court documents, but unfortunately this is about all we know. All we have is a few old news articles which briefly summarize what I just told you and the statement from Mike Matthews. I couldn't find any court documents or any other information on this case, and I don't know if we'll ever see it. I don't have a micropog here to show you a comparison, but there is at least one other video on YouTube where someone shows both of them side by side, and they sound, to my ears, identical. The Mark II Tender Octaver is definitely a different pedal, and it does have a different sound. I prefer the Mark I, and knowing the software it uses, I assume that it is the better version. But perhaps they both have their own strengths and weaknesses. As is my usual format, I'm going to write a song around this pedal and show you how it sounds, and then we can get into a little playing with the knobs. It's a fairly simple pedal. It's got an octave up knob, an octave down knob, and a dry signal. No other switches, but it tracks very well, and it sounds good. So it does the job just fine. Anyways, I hope you enjoy. I'll see you on the other side. So here we are with the lovely Tender Octaver. Here's my clean tone. Now with the dry knob all the way up, it should be the same. It's interesting, it's quite a bit brighter to my ears. And it doesn't appear to be any louder, but it seems like maybe it's filtered out some of the bass. It's interesting. It should sound the same, I think, in this setting, but I guess not. Doesn't sound bad to my ears, but that is quite a big tonal difference for what should be neutral, but I guess not. Anyways, that's not really what we're here for. Let's take a look at the sub octave first. Here's just the sub octave.
As you can see, it tracks chords perfectly, which is great. It just shifts the entire thing down an octave. It sounds like an octaver, of course. It's not going to sound like a bass guitar when you do that, but uh, but it sounds good and it tracks perfectly. I mean, it doesn't. I don't feel any lag. There's no weird pitch shifting going on. It does not pitch correct everything. If your guitar is out of tune, it'll be out of tune with an octave on it. So that's nice, though. I don't like the digital sort of pitch tracking things because I feel like there's always some latency and they just don't necessarily sound good, at least to me. So this is very clean, works the same way as the Micropog. Um, let's do the upper octave. So the tracking is great. The sound is what it is. It sounds the same as a Micropog does. So if you hate Octavers, well, it's got that Octaver sound, but it tracks perfectly. And that's the most important thing for me. And I don't ever use either one of these knobs on their own. I like to blend it kind of gives it a bit of an organ sound, especially on chords. So let's see what happens if we just blend all of it together. Here's everything at noon. That's more than I would usually use, so the way I like to run this is usually the dry all the way up, and then the sub and upper, I'll just sort of play with it to taste. So let's try that. What happens if we run only the sub and the upper octave? It's a little synthy, a little weird, but actually sounds pretty cool with just none of the dry signal. So let's take a look at how it sounds with some distortion on it.
that is pretty cool. I don't exactly like how it sounds with the chords, but it's pretty great for single notes. <laughs> actually reminds me of playing the electric guitar patches on a keyboard, but this time with a real guitar sounding super fake. <laughs> I think it gets a little too messy when going into too much distortion, so better better for clean or overdrive sounds. Here it is with some chorus. <laughs> as well as I put the phaser on too. And let's turn up this reverb. I've even got the, sh the shimmer on this reverb. Let's just, we're gonna go wild. <laughs> I really like the effects in the Archetype Gojira, but the clean amp always has a little bit of breakup, which I'm not a huge fan of. So I'm gonna go over to the clean channel in the Emissary. Let's see how that sounds. Everything else still going through the Archetype Gojira. <laughs>
Well, that was pretty fun. Just turn on all the effects. It sounds really cool that way. I mean, sure, a regular clean guitar would too, but the Octaver definitely adds some cool flavor and it sounds it already sounds kind of spacey you throw on the, the delay the phaser the chorus you might as well i mean come on how else are you gonna use this thing i don't know i don't use it to just double a guitar sound usually or rather like a fake bass you can use it for that and it tracks well but to me i mean it's just not gonna sound like a bass and even as like a sort of fake 12 string guitar I don't think it's going to be really convincing for that. No fault of this Octaver, the tracking is great, the sound is fine, um, but it's just going to sound like a pitch shifted guitar rather than an actual 12 string or an actual bass, but we know that, right? Anyways, if you want to have fun, just pull out some effects on it, that's what I do. I hope you enjoyed this little history lesson and playthrough with this cool and rare guitar pedal. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Keep it real.